true to green. You might know me from things like Frankenbar, Landsberg Prison, and Verbal. Welcome to the Intruder Green Podcast. It is the 13th of October, 2021, and uh, I kept thinking today was Friday the 13th. Um, it's not. It's, it's, I think it's Wednesday the 13th, uh, but it's like October, so, you know, it feels like, uh, you know, shit's starting to get real spooky outside and stuff. We get to celebrate Halloween soon, which is a nice holiday for me. Because they get to go outside and people don't look at me like I'm a weirdo. I mean, they still do. But, uh, yeah, I guess it's true. So I shouldn't be uh, worried about too much, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I love this time of year. The trees are, like, turning all sorts of cool colors. Although I like it when the trees are green because I'm green. And uh, why not? That's a good-ass color. But, you know, like, I also like variety. Varietas, as some would say. And uh, so for me, like, it's real nice when the trees start turning colors and you can, like, uh, go out and the air is real crisp. You see black cat walk across the street and you're like, oh, shit, I got bad luck. But then you're like, no, wait, maybe that cat is a witch and she's going to grant me some wishes or something. I don't know how that, that spooky uh, stuff works, but I think it's pretty cool. And uh, I'm, I'm, I just I don't know. I love this time of year and I hope you guys do, too. Um, and, uh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to the producers of the podcast. We got Luke Ellis, Ren Sons, Heather Royston, Gem City, Sabrina, Sarah Koenig, Audacity Crash Clothing, Chelsea McNally, Cardboard Box Colony, and Carlos Hernandez. Um, I, I, I sent out the stickers. I hope everybody got them who gave me an uh, address to send them to. Uh, still got to figure out exactly who I'm going to, uh, get, uh, you know, the, the, the pricing. Because, like, actually, postage was pretty cheap for those things. But, like, getting the stickers actually made is a little more expensive. But, you know, like, I, I, I want to give them to everybody. Because you guys seem pretty stoked on them, and uh, it's, it's a cool thing to do. Uh, we'll get the next uh, ones out real soon. Um, I, that was last month that I sent those out, right? I hope, I hope I'm not skipping a month already because that will probably happen. But, you know, like, whatever. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, because I got some graphics. And then... Uh, Eventually, I'm going to have to stop making my own. So you're going to get some, like, authentic, intruder green uh, original art on these things. And it's going to be real bad. But, uh, you know, that's what you get. All right. Uh, Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So on this uh, episode, we got uh, my good friend, Katra Whipper. She she works for Destiny Tour Booking, which is our European booking agency. well, it's it's kind of weird because, like, we started up with them not long before the pandemic happened. So, I, I don't know. I think that we only booked a couple of tours with them. And then, uh, you know, now we ain't done shit for, like, two years. So, uh, you know, you know, you guys know how it goes. I don't need to explain nothing to you. But uh, she's doing a new thing um, that we talk about where she's trying to, like, uh, basically use her powers as a... Well, I don't know. She's not an influencer. I mean, she's pretty pretty influential. I would listen to her. But, uh, you know, like basically trying to help people make their uh, their bands, the tours and everything that uh, is involved with being a band more green. And, you know, I can get behind that. What I mean by green is not just that, like, you're going to take me on tour, which would also be cool. But uh, you're going to actually, like, try to have less of an impact on the environment. Because, like, honestly, when you think about, like, what bands do to go on tour, they're basically driving around fucking all over the place, burning fumes and stuff. You got to haul all this gear, so that's, like, extra hot on the, on the, I don't know, the asphalt and the, 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 the gas and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, you probably don't eat so good, so that's, like, you know, you, you, you're uh, eating food that, you're buying stuff from like factory farms and that's all bad stuff. So uh, you've got to get behind the, the green movement and uh, that's what catches up to. So uh, it was a real pleasure uh, getting to catch up and uh, talk to her because I ain't seen her in a while, even though she also, she's German. She lives, uh, you know, not too far away from me, but you know, like I ain't been going nowhere uh, lately, but I, I do have a couple of things coming up that I should probably mention but I don't have them in front of me, and I don't think they're confirmed. 
But basically, if you are able to come to some things in Europe, uh, you should do it. And I will let you know on the social media is what I'm going to be doing. It's nothing like too crazy, but I'm going to some like DJ gigs and stuff like that. Uh, which is going to be cool because that's like the first thing I'll be doing since, uh, you know, since the whole pandemic started. Um, sorry we ain't got no more Mass Intruder shows happening uh, yet that I know of, at least. I don't know. Maybe Intruder Brown's like <laughs> queuing up with uh, Blue and then just saying like, yeah, fuck Green. He's in Europe or whatever. <laughs> that would uh, suit me right, I guess. But, you know, like, uh, I guess that'll happen when it happens. And in the meantime, uh, I got these, uh, yeah, these DJ gigs, um, and they're going to be fun. So, uh, you know, uh, stay tuned for that. I'll let you know on the social medias. And uh, if you don't do social media because you want to be a healthy person, <laughs> then uh, I'll try to uh, let you know on the next uh, episode of the podcast uh, because hopefully everything will be good and confirmed by then. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's all I got to say. And I love you guys. Uh, it's it's my favorite season. Let's get real spooky as time goes on and we get more into it. Uh, and without further ado, I'm with the show. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Intruder Green, an inmate at the Herald Correctional Institution. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, welcome, uh, Katrin. I don't know. Hey. Is that how you say your name? I feel like I've I've never been totally clear on that. Um, Katrin or Katrin? I don't know. Yeah, it, it depends. I mean, there's a bunch of people who say different things, but it's actually in German. It's Katrin. Katrin. So, All yeah. right. I'll do my best. I think I've always kind of said it like that, but, you know, it's like uh, we've known each other for quite a while. And it was always one of those things that was like never super clear to me. Uh, it's with these European names. I'm, when I, us Americans are not so good at it, you know, like uh, we, we just fumble around with it a lot. Um, so I appreciate yeah, your and patience. <laughs> yeah. That. And at some point you just pass uh, the point where you can ask how to pro pronounce someone's name properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know it's, it's at a certain point you know like some people might pronounce my name wrong because they're like you're intruder groon or something and i'm like yeah, no, or, that's not right yeah i heard it's uh, difficult for germans to pronounce uh, the, the band name pears they always say oh where's Pears?" <laughs> yeah, yeah i can see that i well, like, like that name like one time when we were in germany a lady kept calling us masked intruder Oh, like yeah. she really had to get that that the ED yeah. in there, and it was like, right. yeah, you know, you could just say "masked intruder." Like nobody ever actually like pronounces it that well. But if you want to, I guess that's cool too. <laughs> Whatever, we, we shouldn't be so picky. I guess is what it comes yeah. down to. Right. Right. Nice. <laughs> well, anyway, like I said, we've been friends for a long time, so it's really nice to have you on the the podcast. Um, Honestly, I think it's been a while since I had somebody on that like I knew. Well, no, that's not true. I just did one with uh, Fletcher from the copyrights, uh, but that's not out yet. So anyway, you know, right. usually there's a mishmash of people I know, pl plus people like who are like I'm just meeting for the first time. But uh, OK, OK. You know. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Nice. yeah thanks for having here. me. This is exciting. Yeah, absolutely. We kind of this is kind of like a, a snuck up on me thing. Um, my manager, Anka. Uh, got a hold of me and was like, hey, Katrin's doing this new, uh, is it an agency that you're a part of or what? Yeah, um, so we call it the Change Agency. It's an agency for change. So uh, we're trying to make the music industry greener, your favorite color. Yeah, that's and right. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, yeah, so basically we're trying to implement um, 
different measures behind, on and in front of the stage to make touring more sustainable. And to really, yeah, I would say if I had to break it down to two uh, words, I would say it's uh, empowerment and enthusiasm that we want to, you know, bring across and get people involved and, you know, educate them so that they can in the future do a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's super cool and important. Obviously, I'm behind it because like I'm green. Your business is like trying to be green or whatever. Um, and it's funny because I was just thinking, I, I think I said something on the last uh, podcast about how I really want to get into some kind of like cause. Well, obviously, the, the thing itself is a cause when you're trying to make things more green, but some kind of like company or uh, nonprofit uh, that I could like promote on the show. So this is like perfect, <laughs> honestly, Absolutely. Um, yeah. that, 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 that I got you on here. Um, and maybe we can uh, work out some other stuff in the future for you guys uh, as being part of the show. But, uh, you know, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I appreciate it. And yeah, I think it's real important because it's like, yeah, all us, most of us like punk rock musicians or whatnot, you know, we got to do what we got to do to like do our thing and get around. But like a lot of that involves, you know, I don't know. I, I'm guessing these are things that you're looking into. Like when you're getting merch done and it's got to get shipped somewhere and you got to drive around in a big ass van all the time with all this gear and you're just, you're just chugging up, chugging out, uh, you know, all of the uh, fumes from the gas you're burning and whatnot. And yeah, I could see all of that having a big impact, you know, People talk about in the pandemic how uh, the the environment was actually starting to heal a little bit because people weren't going out and doing their thing so much. And I feel like maybe uh, bands not touring had something to do with that. I don't know. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's it rather has a smaller impact. There's definitely industries that have a way bigger impact. But I the way I look at it is that we have the opportunity to reach a lot of people. So, you know, from my standpoint, it's more of an educational um, um, yeah, message than uh, really a technical one. I mean, don't get me wrong. So every country has to be climate neutral at some point, and yeah. we can only do this if everyone works together. And if all industries and every individual, you know, tackles their own personal carbon footprint as well. Yeah. I mean, of course, we need to implement systemic changes first. But uh, yeah, so for the touring sector, it definitely comes down to mobility, but not just of the bands, but also of the fans. So, for example, I don't know if you've heard about this one because it's, uh, it's, it's been a while, but uh, Coldplay once did, uh, sorry, Radiohead once did uh, the mm. study 20 years ago. Same and difference, it, really. <laughs> yeah, <kidding>. right. <laughs> Go and on, it turned no. out uh, that 80% of the carbon footprint of the tour came down to the uh, mobility of the fans. So the fan travel. Oh, wow. So, yeah, right. It's, it's kind of a surprising element, right? So, um, I mean, I guess not when you think about it, because right, like exactly. the band's driving one vehicle. And even yeah. if it's like a big ass bus or something, you, you know, like if they're packing them in, you know, that's thousands of people driving their own cars. So I guess it kind of makes sense when you really think about it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. But and especially at a at a um, at, at a big scale, you know, if you think about yeah. like a band like Radiohead that draws 20,000 people. Oh, yeah. And they fly from different parts of the country to see them. Yeah, of course, this has a big impact. So um, but uh, yeah, so mobility and uh, energy and water and uh, yeah. you know sustainable resources like i said merchandise like how is your merch produced do you have a uh, fair produced merch and organic cotton or is it just uh, a cheap shirt made in bangladesh you know so yeah. um yeah that's it, it basically it's i think it's a very interesting uh, area of expertise because it basically comes down to a lot of moral decisions as well and a lot of reflection on what what role do I want to play in this world? You know, what is my personal responsibility? How do I want to influence the world? And that's, I don't know. I don't know if it goes together with uh, the no future punk attitude or not, but to me, <laughs> it is a very, it is a very punk rock thing to think about 
what is my influence in this world and yeah. on this planet? You know? Well, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by the no future punk rock. Like there's no future. <laughs> so fuck it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like one aspect of punk rock. But I don't know. I think that's kind of like the old school thing. And people are more, these days are more like, nah, fuck that. I want to have a future. Future's cool. Like we can make it cool. Like, you know, there was a time I feel like, you know, probably around when like punk rock was getting started and stuff like maybe what do you want to say the 70s or the 80s when it was kind of like yeah fuck this <laughs> like yeah. it was like lots of bad shit going on i mean there's bad shit going on now too but like yeah i feel like maybe uh <laughs> there was like a little taste and maybe it happened in like the 90s because there was like a lot of happy music coming out then I mean, probably some good hardcore stuff, too. But like, you know, that was like when pop punk blew up and everything and the ska stuff and everything like that. I feel like that was a time when people kind of got this taste of like, wait, life could actually get better. And like, you yeah. know, why not, uh, you know, strive for that instead of like, eh, the end is coming. So fuck it, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, actually, I think it's the same today. It's a very... I think today we live in the most exciting times that we could ever live it because we have such a such a big influence in, on how to shape the future. You know, yeah. I think that's super. It's super fucking exciting and empowering, actually. So the more people get on board and the more momentum we have in this movement, the better. It's yeah. Really cool. You know, I think there's 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 a lot of promise uh, with the way technology is these days and everything. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like every time something cool happens, you find out some like dirty secrets about it. And then you're like, Oh shit. Yeah. Like, Oh, look at uh, these billionaires or whatever are going to the space. And that's kind of cool, but Oh shit. That had a huge environmental impact. And also like, yeah. uh, you know, like that doesn't improve my life any better, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's maybe that's neither here nor there, but like, uh, I don't know. I guess to, to, to talk more about the, the actual business you're doing, um, yeah. you know, you're just getting started. So I don't know if this how 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 developed this is so far. But like you have talked about, like how you're getting your merch done and stuff. And I've always been interested in that because it's like, yeah, I would love to like know that our shit was, uh, you know, had like minimal environmental impact or whatnot. Uh, are there like companies doing that already that are like accessible? Like, I know there's probably some like hippies pressing stuff in like some, I don't know, garage somewhere, but like, are there real like established companies that you can actually go to? Yeah, there are actually. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to connect you to those hippies. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, there could be hippies working for a company. They're pretty, <laughs> they're pretty wide these days. <laughs> yeah no so basically so how we structure it is that we give workshops to people to um, educate them and help them find what they want to change basically yeah. and it's you know it could be basics about environmental change and why it's important for touring or your booking agency or your label or whatever yeah um, or green communication as well you know and then we also put together um, sustainability concepts. So basically, um, if you say, okay, I just really generally want to base my band or business around sustainability because it's the smartest thing to do, <laughs> then yeah. uh, we, can, we can go through every aspect of that together with you, you know? And then, um, yeah, we do communications campaigns as well. And uh, we also do a carbon um, analysis. So, oh, cool. you know, yeah, we have a carbon calculator. And so we basically, you give us the data uh, for, for example, if you want to calculate how much carbon is emitted through uh, CD production and all of that, then you give us all the data and we calculate that for you. And then we tell you, hey, I don't know, your, uh, your new recording emitted three tons of CO2. Yeah. Well, regarding that, um, I ain't bought a CD in at least 10 years. I ain't even stolen a CD in at least 10 years. But I'm hoping what you'll find is that records are somehow 
uh, more environmentally, environmentally friendly than CDs, which is probably <laughs> not going to be the case, but I wish yeah. it was. Uh, I also think like, I know that like, you know, the big, uh, every time you talk about like, oh, we, we need to stop drilling for oil and having wars for oil and stuff. And like the Republicans are always like, well, you like those records and shit, huh? What yeah. do you think those are made out of? Exactly. It's like, yeah. OK, fair enough. But yeah. I do think, you know, it's like, but, you know, can we make those out of something else? Yeah, and at the moment. Yeah, that, is, yeah, uh, that is, is that is a big question. Yeah. I mean, there is some hard truths out there and it's really it's really difficult. You can actually press them um with less grams of vinyl so that they're yeah. thinner. That helps a little bit. Sure. But, but I mean, but yeah, I don't know, that doesn't sound like a solution. Big... No, no. The material definitely is the elephant in the room. For yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess I, I, the, the, the other thing I think about is like, well, OK, maybe we can't really effectively make records out of something else, but we could. We know that we could fucking make cars and stuff run on something else. Like we're doing it. Like we did it. They did it. I think when was the electrical car like originally made in like the eighties or something. And then yeah. it just went away for a while. And then no, it, now actually, it's like back in full force. So yeah. I'm like, okay, so uh, maybe we need oil for like certain things like records. Cause those are fucking red, but uh, yeah. not necessarily for the fucking real, uh, shit that's uh fucking things up like cars and stuff yeah, yeah so, you know i i listened to a very interesting podcast today and they said that in the 1920s there were electrical cars around in berlin and 50 percent of the okay. cars running in berlin were electrical and then you know it yeah. uh, kind of died out because the batteries didn't last very long and everything right. but yeah, yeah so it actually dates back to the 1920s that's it's crazy to think about it yeah that it's not actually a new technology but that it's actually yeah pretty old and uh and just history took a different uh course yeah you know i think uh, a lot of that has to do with uh yeah maybe they didn't have it quite right when they released it and then people were like this sucks give me that gas powered thing because yeah. you know that's exactly. easy it's like uh what do you want to like have this uh you know what you want to build a house with this drill and screws and like i don't know they don't know how to do it so you gotta like crank a bicycle get on a bike and like ride around on it to make the screws go in and they're right. like this sucks <laughs> give me a hammer with some nails and then you're like yeah. building everything out of like hammer and nails and somebody's like wait i got a solution it's this drill thing and it's like 20 years later and they're like no i remember that it sucks yeah. and it's like yeah. no just give it another chance Exactly. So I think yeah. at least at least people are starting to do that now, like electrical vehicles are coming back. Obviously, the yeah. technology has improved a whole hell of a lot. Uh, so that's the thing. Um, I guess the only other thing um, with all of this is like the cost and how expensive it's going to be. And I think it will be yeah. expensive at first, like all this new technology always is. But like you got to get it running you know to like yeah. for it to take off and eventually become cheaper right yeah yeah for sure that definitely but also um i mean it's it's not just new technology you know it's a a, a shift in uh, consciousness basically yeah, yeah, so, that's true because even if you switch everything to renewable energies our energy hunger is still way too big so it's basically you need to, to bring that down <laughs> you know yeah. and it's 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 not going to be easy or maybe sometimes it's maybe not even going to be glamorous but um yeah it's yeah it, i still think it's a very exciting time to to implement all this change and to get it on the way yeah i yeah. i agree with that wholeheartedly um but i wanted to back i got to backtrack a little bit here um yeah so i guess the way i heard about this was that, that you're doing an agency but mm -hmm. is it more of just like the, like, I don't know. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around what, what, what this, uh, this venture is like, because you're doing like, like you said, like uh, workshops and teaching mm -hmm. people about stuff, but are yeah. you also like, you know, booking tours for people and whatnot and trying to mm -hmm. just do it the greenest way? No, 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 no. We're basically consulting people on how to, 
do their thing more sustainably. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's very interesting because then it it makes me even think you'd be perfect for this show. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That just uh, now my mind is racing with all these things I want to ask you about, but it's more about like personal stuff that I want to like figure out for on my end of things. Cause it's like, even just doing this podcast, like, yeah, it's pretty minimal on, on, on a, on a, on a, you know, energy or whatever level. Um, you know, I use the internet and, uh, some electricity and, uh, you know, but, uh, one thing I am trying to do is, uh, I got my Patreon and I'm, I'm like sending yeah. stickers out to people. So I want to fucking make sure that's as sustainable as possible, you know? Yeah. 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 And you stickers. know, there's a lot of things you can do sustainable. You're, uh, yeah. website provider or you know like the oh, energy really? yeah. that's yeah. that's certainly something i never would have thought of but yeah absolutely yeah. yeah you can you can check out how much uh how much carbon you're emitting with your website i think it's uh, called i don't know carbon website or something.com so you can just put in random websites and see how much carbon they use okay through yeah but do i have to do that or do you guys do that for me if i like sign up with you guys <laughs> Well, I, w- I will tell you these things and then you can decide if you want to do them <laughs> <Okay>. yourself or. <laughs> All right. All right. Or if you want us to do that. <laughs> I smell what you're stepping in. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So how long you've been doing this? Like how this is pretty new. You got like at least one partner on this. Yeah, exactly. Zara, Not a whole yeah. huge staff yet, but. No, 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 no. It's just the two, to the two of us at the moment. So the past year or so, I mean, yeah, basically a couple months after the pandemic started, we yeah. really started to, you know, educate ourselves and get some, some uh, training and knowledge in that area because it was something that we we're very passionate about. So we're also uh, in this network called Music Declares Emergency, which is um, like a voluntary net- network of people working in the music business trying to make the industry more sustainable from within, oh, you cool. know? Yeah. And um, yeah, that, that has been so much fun and so cool. So we said, okay, you know, we're already, we're already gathering all this knowledge and already doing so much in that regard. So maybe we will see how it goes if we do this professionally on a side. Hell yeah. yeah. That, that's that's uh, how, it, how it originally started. That's... Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. And are you guys, I mean, I don't know, I guess, are you doing this all remotely? Like people just get on like a Zoom meeting with you or what? Like, can it, you know, are you kind of like, you're based out of Europe, obviously, but like, yeah. can any Joe Schmo from America be like, I'm booking a tour. How do I do that the greenest way possible? And then yeah, I get sure. on there and I'm like, bring me with, then it'll yeah. be green as hell. And then they'll right. be like, that's yeah. not what I'm talking about. Green, you stupid. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Whatever. Yeah, no, that, that would be a great solution. But it's um, <laughs> so for the workshops, uh, we can we can do that either way. We can do it digitally or physically in a room. And um, then for the tours, it depends on, on uh, how far you want to take it, you know, because yeah. we'd be happy to go on tour and uh, to do um, like a a carbon analysis of the tour and you know talk to the venues what kind of how much water they're using what kind of energy they're using how much energy there is being used on the day of the show and put all these data together to make an analysis in the end so hi intruder maniacs are you in a band the answer is of course you are everybody's in a fucking band these days anyway if you're in a band congratulations i'm making the worst financial decision of your life Aside from taking out college loans or something, yeah. Now there is a way to lessen the burden of such a financial decision. It's called merchandising. And Stupid Rap Merch Company is all ready to meet your merchandising needs. You want uh, some t-shirts? Uh, you want got a tight deadline you need them printed on? And because you booked a tour less than a month out and uh, you didn't get canceled like everybody else's tours did? Uh, how about a bunch of weird random trinkets like keychains or medallions and what about koozies? You know, like everybody likes koozies. Koozies are great because they keep your drink cold and your hand warm or vice versa depending on what you're drinking. Stupid Red Merch Company can get all these made for you. Stupid Red Merch Company is an in-house artist 
who can help you with your designs and stuff. They're still a small enough company that uh, they pay special attention to you and your special needs. Because, you know, everybody's got special needs. Like, uh, you know, you probably mostly. And uh, they even got a web store. That's where the real magic is. You go on tour and you sell your stuff. But chances are you're going to have some leftover or some fans are going to feel like left out because they didn't have enough money to buy something at your show. So they go on a stuporedmerch.com and find stuff from your band on there. They'll take care of all your production and shipping fulfillment needs. So go ahead, go on a Stupid Red Merch Company web store right now and uh, check out all the tight bands that are already on there. They got a bunch of them, like uh, the Bomb Pops and like the Bad Cop, Bad Cop and stuff. It's all good. Uh, yeah. Uh, all sorts of cool swag. And uh, right now... Right now, if you go on there and you, at checkout, you use the code PRISON, you can get 15% off all of the uh, Stupid Red merch branded apparel uh, at stupidredmerch.com. Go check it out. Stupidredmerch.com Guitar players, I bet you thought you were shit out of luck when it comes to finding your dream guitar amp. You know, you go on some auction site or something and it's all crap. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because, you know, you got to look in the right place. And the right place is Yeah Man's Vintage and Used Guitars. They got exactly what you're looking for. Now, I know what you're thinking. Aren't they located in, like, Switzerland or something? Yeah, man, they are. Burn Switzerland, to be exact. But, you know, you can uh, get on the internet and you can go check out the website, yeahmansguitars.com, and uh, you can order stuff on there. So, uh, you know, it don't really matter where the heck you are in the world. You can just get on their website and uh, find all sorts of cool stuff that you're looking for. And you might not even know that you wanted it until you see it on there. And there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, if you got something specific you're looking for and need some help finding it, just hit up Yeah Man Guitars on the electronic mail. That's the email. It's like 21st century and you got email and websites. It's like amazing. Some people would call it magic. Some people will call it science. I just call it, I don't know, crazy shit. Uh, yeahmansguitars at gmail.com. As far as email goes, it's where you email them. And while you're at it, get your band a tour in Europe and stop by the shop. Michael and the rest of the crew would love to meet you, I'm sure. And you could tell them Green sent you. Yeah, man's vintage and used guitars. It depends on, on what you want, you know. So we can do this remote, but we are also hands-on going on tour with bands if they have the capacity and need for that so yeah absolutely um and you've been around a while like i know the reason i know you basically is because you're uh, uh you work as an agent i don't know if you're still doing that with all that's going on in the pandemic and everything um but uh you know yeah so uh what what kind of like i just want to like get into your credibility as a cool punk rock chick who's <laughs> like doing cool things. Um, what was it like? Uh, you're living in Berlin now. I don't know where you're originally from, mm -hmm. but like growing up, getting into punk rock. Right. So, yeah, I'm originally from Southern Germany and there was really nothing around except for one venue. Oh, and yeah. I would uh, start working there when I was 17 or something. And it's basically, so you go there and it has a very DIY, hands-on mentality. So there was this saying, so if you do something, you do it, you know? Okay. So for example, <laughs> if, if you wanted to build a bar in the backyard. Yeah. Oh, you could just go for and it. Just do it. Yeah, right. Nice. You, you just go for it, you know? Yeah. And that's the kind of the kind of mentality that really influenced me and that really made me um, the person I am today, I think. And so, yeah, I've, I've worked there or I used to work there for about 10 years or so during my studies. And that's also the time, you know, where I got really into the music scene and yeah. very much involved with punk rock as well. I used to have a band during that time, too. And so I would go oh, on tour with them. Great. And um, yeah, just those two things really kind of um, got me into the scene, so to speak. Do you and want then to say what the point, band was called? Oh, oh I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Because They're you called... know I'm going to Google it. It's yeah, yeah, this, right. You yeah, yeah. But you don't have to. It's, it's totally up to you. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. They're called Jump the Shark, and it, it used to be a ska oh. band. So, yeah. 
And um, nice. yeah, at some point, friends of mine, they just called me up and said, hey, so uh, we've noted that you're bossing around your own people. Uh, <laughs> you, do you think, you think you could do that for us as well and drive us and be our tour manager? And so, um, yeah, that was the first time I went on tour with a different band and they um, were support for Real Big Fish during that time for a week oh, nice. in Germany. So, yeah, that was a really cool, fun first tour. Yeah, yeah I, couldn't, I couldn't sleep at all the first night, you know, because I'd never driven a splitter van before. So I was oh, very yeah. nervous. Yeah. That, oh, those uh, are fun yeah. to drive, though. Those are good getaway vehicles because you can fill them up with exactly. lots of goods and then get yeah. the hell out of there and the police exactly. probably won't catch you. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. <laughs> um, also good for touring. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's cool, though. Um, so you just like kind of jumped right into it. Like I know a lot of people are like, all right, I know these guys and they're going to take me out as a merch person and then I do that for a while. And then eventually somebody's like, well, can you do this too? I don't know what else, but then eventually they work themselves up to manager and you kind of just like fucking, uh, I don't know, leap to the top. There's a better analogy. Just fucking <laughs> rocket to the top. That's the word rocket. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, if the top is sleeping on floors a lot, <laughs> that's how I started out. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, when we yeah. went on, on tour, it was just a lot of a lot of crashing on couches and having 10 people in one room sleeping in on floors. Yeah, it's a know? long way to the top if you want to yeah, rock and roll. Yeah. All right. Very yeah. glamorous. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all about the glamour of punk rock. Yeah, Worse. right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's why it's the perfect, uh, you know, like uh, kind of thing to really uh, push the whole uh, the green agenda. I'm, I, I yeah. want to start calling it that. Actually, yeah. people probably won't like that because when you call something an agenda, suddenly it's like a bad term. Like uh, mm -hmm. Republicans will be like, oh, they're doing the green agenda. You know, they have an agenda. That means that's bad. And people will be like, oh, yeah, I don't like that green agenda. And it'll be like, yeah, but we're just trying to like, you know, save the planet. Like, yeah, right. Why yeah, is that so, a bad agenda to have? And they'll be like, yeah. whatever, Green. I know about your agenda. And I'll be like, yeah, it's good, though. You should really listen anyway. Um, yeah. So you started doing that. Uh, yeah. with, you started touring with this band. I don't think you said what the band you were touring with at first. Oh, before. yeah. Oh, they're not around anymore. They're called the Prosecution. Oh, also, okay. I never heard of them. A, yeah. I heard a real big fish, though. We play with them. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're definitely fun to, to go on tour with. Yeah. yeah. And our, hmm. What's it? I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but uh, say whatever you want. Have you heard that there is any updates on their, uh, touring uh, career on real big fish i got no idea i ain't heard nothing okay. all yeah. right all right i i haven't heard anything <laughs> are you looking for info because you want to book them no 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 no, no? oh no okay. i mean they're a great band and everything that's fine um, yeah yeah i, I just no. don't want to say anything that's not been uh, verified or out or whatever oh yeah i don't know i i got no idea what's up with those guys i haven't heard anything um you know not super in touch with those guys, but uh, they were fun to hang out with when we were on tour, you know, Yeah, nice. as most bands are. There's like a handful of bands where I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'll say hi to them if we're in the same place, but I don't need to tour with them again. Yeah, but right. most of the bands we tour with are fucking great and I would totally do it again. Yeah. Which which one is your which one are your top three bands to tour with? Oh, good God. That's not a fair question at all. Yeah, because, well. I mean, oh, there's so many different things to consider because, like, I kind of want to say for one of them to be the Interrupters because oh, yeah? they're gr just the greatest people. And, uh, you know, uh, the tours we did with them, like we met them on the Warp Tour and we mm -hmm. hung out with them a lot then. And then uh, we actually did a legit tour with them. Uh, yeah, in the U.S., right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was and now, you know, they're fucking doing the uh, the big, big tour with fucking what is it called? Like the mega the hella hella mega, mega tour. tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and the, the thing about those guys is like they're they're all like 
the, it's the classic uh, kind of thing where they like went to LA to get uh, famous basically. And it's working out <laughs> mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they didn't do it by being like sleazy LA, like rock stars either. They mm-hmm. did it through working their asses off. And yeah. like, of course they had to like get to know the right people. I think Tim Armstrong helped them out a lot, but like they really put in the work and are yeah, just for sure. really talented musicians and really great people. Like they are not yeah. out to fuck anybody over. So, uh, yeah, they would definitely be somewhere near the top of my list, if not oh. the top. Um, you know, probably like, I don't know, maybe it's like a toss up between Lagwagon and Me First and the Gimme Gimme's because they're like almost the same band. Yeah. You know? <laughs> maybe right. they I feel like, yeah, both of them would be tied somewhere up there. Um, just because, you know, I love listening, love hanging out, drinking whiskey with Joey Cape and listening to them to tell, tell stories. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did you see Joey on his last tour? Uh, no, he was supposed to come to Leipzig, but uh, uh, the show got canceled because it was booked outside and it rained all day. Ah, and shit, okay. Yeah. I was real confused because, uh, you know, this, this venue that they got booked at has like a huge inside space. And I don't see why they couldn't have just like lowered the capacity and had it inside uh, Mm -hmm. since that's apparently what they've been doing on a lot of those dates, but they didn't do it. So it got canceled and he skipped it. But uh, Joe McMahon came to town and I got to hang out with him from Smoke of Fire. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a good time. I was going to have him on the podcast, but instead we just drank a whole lot of beer. (laughs) Which we that still could have like done a... on the podcast, but you know, yeah. I guess it just that sounds didn't like happen. a good choice, though. Yeah, yeah, it was a fun. solid one. Yeah, yeah. And then not to to not let your question go completely unanswered, I I think I might say the Flatliners for uh, that oh, other yeah, okay. top three band. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can see Those that. Those guys are great. They're, they're like fun to hang out. I think they're oh, well. No shit. Now that now that I said that, I realized I left out toy guitar. I love them too. Um, and we ain't played with them nearly enough. Like we played with them a few times and we love seeing them, but, uh, yeah, could definitely, uh, tour with them sometime again. Mm -hmm. I think, I think there's a toss up. I I was reminded of them because I always say that, uh, flatliners are like the coolest band on fat records, but toy guitar might also have that spot. Right. Not, 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 I'm not saying the best band or like, the 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 uh, most talented band, but like the coolest band, yeah. because like they're all super cool, you know, like yeah. like they're nice people, but they're also just fucking cool. Yeah. That's, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And their music is just fucking kick ass. Oh, I love it all. You know, like yeah, yeah. That's that's another thing about all those bands I mentioned. I fucking love all their tunes as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. For sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. All right. I won't ask you that question because I feel like you sh- you would have a problem answering it considering your <laughs> occupation. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, let's let's not stand to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that. Um but I and it, I don't know, anyway, I appreciate uh your uh your new venture. And yeah. I, I think I will probably be getting a hold of you about more stuff in the future because mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. It seems kind of like a good uh, fit for like what I'm trying to do and everything. Yeah. What I'm newly trying to do. I'm barely trying to do anything, but I, I yeah. like had this thought in my head, like, well, I'm green. The environment is green. It, there's exactly. the green movement where people want to like fix things. And that's really important to me. So uh, maybe I should get on this. Uh, so maybe yeah. you can help me out with that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Maybe you can you can knit your own green masks from now on. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. But uh yeah, we'll figure that out. <laughs> very punk rock. <laughs> that would be very punk rock. I agree. But I don't yeah. know. Maybe I'm not that punk rock. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um yeah, so I don't know if there was something else you wanted to discuss. Um, but I would like to ask you the question I warned you about briefly, yeah. um, mm-hmm. crime stories. Do you got any? Yeah, I, I have one. It's not, I did actually not commit the crime myself. That's totally fine. Yeah. But 
I um, have heard the tales of a great rhyme story. <laughs> so um, there used to be a festival close to a zoo. And uh, one of the bands that uh, we book or used to book, I'm not uh, disclosing who it was. Okay. One of the band members broke into the zoo with uh, some friends and wanted to hug a baby elephant. But <laughs> obviously the person was very drunk. <laughs> but oh, yeah. the, the mother elephant didn't want uh, the baby elephant to be hugged. So yeah, um, it that. came rushing forward to defend the baby elephant and ran over the band member. And oh, the band wow. member broke, broke a couple of ribs. Wow. And um, that was uh, that story. But we cannot say who it was or where it was because, <laughs> you know, I don't know if the zoo uh, would, would like the fact that some band member was trying to hug the elephants. <laughs> In yeah. the middle of the night at the well, concert. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if there was any legal action against this person after that, but I'd say, you know, like, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> it's it's a dumbass move, but I get it. You're being ridiculous. And, uh, you know, he kind of got what was coming to him. So I think uh, yeah, justice served. All right. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> yeah. I think so, too. Yeah. You know, sometimes that'll happen. You get a little unruly or whatever. And, uh, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. He, he, uh, he, he, maybe he learned a lesson. I don't know. I think I, because I think I know who you're talking about. And I'm not sure he learned the yeah. lesson from that one because he, he <laughs> that person is kind Probably. of known for doing lots of fucked up shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think so too. I don't think he learned a lesson there either. <laughs> so. But yeah, definitely matching the baby elephant in size. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Whoa. laughs> wow. Yeah. Maybe he thought he's a twin brother there in the dark or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, anyway, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's been great talking to you. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to bring up. Uh other than like where people can get a hold of you and find out more about uh, what you're doing. Yeah. So yeah, either uh, you can drop me um, a line at uh, the change and see, or you can write me an email at destiny tour booking. So yeah, we have loads oh, yeah. of exciting tours coming up too. Oh yeah. So by the is way, there like sorry, a website people go to or what? Yeah. It's a uh, the minus change .de. Or okay. destiny minus truebooking.de. I forgot to to tell uh to tell you that, but I'm still a booking agent. <laughs> yeah, no, oh. you did say that. I, okay, I, okay, good. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah I don't, you know. I don't want uh, any any bands of mine that I'm looking <laughs> scared of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because of the I get podcast. That. Right, right. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um. Yeah. How is that going though? Uh, over the last year, it's. I mean, it's been rough for all the bands, so I'm guessing it's been extra rough for you i always said like bands are actually kind of almost in a, a special uh situation because it's like when the pandemic happened and suddenly all the tours were ca canceled it's like you know guys like us uh you know we just rob rob some stores or something allegedly or like get a job or something and right. whatever um, or like bands that are bigger than us, maybe they're like, well, I can't tour this year. So I guess I got to stop buying, uh, avocado toast, uh, every mm. day or something, or like, you know, have to tighten up the belt and not, you know, spend so much money, but eventually we're going to get mm -hmm. back to tour and it'll be fine. Um, because they are rich. Uh, but for you, it's like, this is your job. This is your career. So like, right. How does it work? I think this is actually something I'd really like to know about. Uh, yeah. You. Yeah. I mean, w we at Destiny got quite lucky because um, Dave has kept everybody on and uh, we're actually on furlough at the moment. So oh, meaning yeah. that we only work, you know, I don't know, so many hours a day, uh, if that. And then um, the government pays uh, yeah. a chunk of our salary. I think uh, so, Germany was pretty good about that stuff. Yeah, a lot better yeah, than absolutely. certain other countries. At, at least, at least uh, for the people who are uh, employed. 
not so yeah. much for people who are self-employed oh yeah you know but so so we got really lucky because uh yeah we're employed here at destiny and um <laughs> But in general, I mean, it's it's hard to for my boss, yeah, not to have an income for one and a half years. So and to yeah. still pay pay your staff and your employees. So, um, yeah, I'd say we're definitely very much looking forward to next year and hoping that Punk and Droplic will be will be a a smashing hit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll right. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, I hope to to at least uh, go to one of those shows if I don't. Yeah. Assuming That'd I'm not playing guess. one. Um. Yeah. I'm guessing you guys have everything booked out to until like 2030 or something. At this <laughs> something point. like that. It sure <laughs> feels like it, you know. Yeah. Right. And at some point, you just lose track of the years when you have to uh, to postpone uh, tours for the fifth or sixth time. You know, it's yeah. very just the years just. Yeah. Don't make sense anymore, basically. Well, that <laughs> Don't was... ask me if I booked that tour <laughs> for 2019 or 2023 or, you know, everything is just floating around and just getting that's, postponed. That's so. right. Uh, well, I hope things are going to stop getting uh, canceled now. I, I feel like I heard about some other tours already getting canceled for this later this year, but maybe that was wrong. So uh, yeah. I don't know. Are you guys do you guys have? stuff coming this year or is it still mm -hmm. on hold yeah we have a couple bands that are coming this year but they're most european bands or yeah. um this band from russia uh, uh moscow death brigade your brothers oh yeah they also wear masks that's right <laughs> yeah they are actually touring at the end of september and for them it's a little it's a little tricky as well because uh, they got vaccinated with sputnik 5 Oh, okay. the Russian vaccination, yeah. but it's not accepted yet in the EU. Ah, shit. Yeah, right. So, you know, it's just the pandemic. It's a whole new bag of surprises. So yeah, really I mean, that's a weird thing to think about. Like, yeah, you know, the <laughs> there's always new shit to deal with, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Ooh. yeah, we have to, you know, figure out how to safely get them from each country to the next country and you know so we want to make it as safe as possible for them as well because uh by law they're seen like they're not vaccinated you know even though they right. are but right. so theoretically they're not vaccinated huh. so um yeah we have to you know make sure that they're not sharing any dressing rooms with other people so that they really don't get infected so it's not in danger of the tour and yeah yeah well yeah and uh you know hopefully it all works out nobody gets sick um yeah. i'm stoked that uh shows are starting to happen again though it happened a lot quicker than i thought it would um with yeah with, uh, yeah let's see for how long it's... yeah but you know we'll like, see yeah. we don't know could be cool i still time. haven't gone to one yet joey cape was yeah. gonna be my first one and then it got Shit. canceled because of the fucking rain which was yeah, real you stupid come to Berlin. Yeah, yeah, I probably should have. I miss Berlin. I'll get yeah. there soon, though. I got to go see Flo at the awesome. Ramones Museum and all that stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Have you oh, heard yeah. that the Ramones Museum is closed, though? Oh, really? Like forever or what? Yeah, at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he gave up the lease for the museum. Oh, shit. So, yeah, if he opens it up again, it will be somewhere else. Damn, I had no That's idea. Now. That's a huge bummer. It's really, yeah, it's really closed down for now. So, fuck me. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope Flo's all right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's other shit to do in uh, Berlin. So uh, I yeah. will still come there sometime. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Hell yeah. Well, it was good yeah, to see cool. you, Katrin. Absolutely. And uh, I'm looking forward to finding out more about your uh, new ventures. And uh, I'm going to send you some messages and stuff to see if we can, like, I don't know, if I can, like, get on your team to promote what you're doing and stuff. Because I think we might be a good fit with what I'm yeah. uh, trying to do. Yeah. Pushing the green agenda. <laughs> exactly. We got to push the green agenda. I'm into it. All right. 
Yeah. Hashtag <laughs> green agenda. Holy shit. Actually, I've been using the hashtag go green for a while. I think that's right. probably maybe not the best hashtag for me to use because it's pretty like broad. I'm sure a lot of other people use it for other things, but yeah, why not put me on that bandwagon? Oh, exactly. Wow. Maybe you'll become the mascot. That's right. You know? That's the idea. Yeah. 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 And then this whole <laughs> podcast will become a propaganda machine. All right. Yeah. Exactly. Because that's the only thing that works these days. You got to yeah. fill people's heads with lies and make them believe in shit that you want them to do. All right. Yeah. And then we'll be the gangrene. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's true to green and his gang of green. All right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Hey. Well, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thanks for coming on and uh, we'll speak to you soon. All right. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. Say oh, yeah. hi to your, to your manager. I will. Yeah. Jail, jail officer or whatever, Anka. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And say hi to Pesky. Hope all is good. And yeah. Uh, fuck yeah. And that's it for the Intruder Green Podcast. I want to thank Cantrip again for being on it. You can hit me up on all the socials in Intruder Green and go to IntruderGreen.com for all sorts of good stuff. The Intruder Green call in line is plus one six zero eight five three five nine six zero eight. Patreon.com slash Intruder Green if you want to become a producer of the podcast. The Intruder Green Podcast is produced by Colin Bennett, management by Anka Kramer, Aaron Makeup by Jennifer Smith, set design by Dylan Raymer, catering Matthew Hindershot, lighting Sweet Flights, Rahway and Jason. I think so. The product was by Kaito. Think of how stupid the average person is and realize half of them are stupider than that. Whoop! Whoa!